This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Hello, you guys. It's nice to be back. I have very much missed making videos. I know it hasn't been very long, but to me it feels like it took quite a break because the last video I made ahead of time and so it's been a bit of a gap for me and I do really enjoy making this video so it's nice to be back but I digress instantly. So in this video I'm gonna show you my final return to uh, making some traditional artwork in my sketchbook that is not a study and I'm super excited about that because honestly it's been so long since I've just drawn for fun and yeah i'm i'm going to show you the entire process of this new drawing and i'm mostly going to just catch up with where i'm at what i've been up to for the past couple of weeks and not talk so much about the process because it's a uh, pretty straightforward this time around and yeah i just wanted to kind of catch up with you guys i started the video with speeding up some of the footage because i noticed that the um focus was off so that's the explanation for that, but for the rest of the video, for the most part, it is real time, just cut into chunks like my typical style of editing as of late. So just to quickly um, tell you guys what I'm actually drawing, I decided to just, you know, draw something for fun without thinking about it too hard at all in spirit of Inktober, which is how I typically approached it for the vast majority of the time that I've done it, which was pretty much every year up until maybe last year. Last year, I still wanted to do it, kind of uh, fell off the wagon pretty quickly though, because I realized that there are probably more important things that I should focus on. And this year, as much as I actually wanted to do Inktober, I simply couldn't because of my schedule. Um, and I was out of the country for quite a bit of time, like before October and near the middle like for for a chunk in the middle of October so I decided to just skip out on it completely without even trying because I knew that there's no way that I could keep up with it and so now I'm back home from Lightbox Expo which is which was my trip that I took in the middle of the month and man it was so fun it was honestly such such a pleasant experience it was a very very positive experience i didn't really go into it expecting anything i have never been to lightbox expo before it just looked really cool from people's social medias and i always got like a sense of fomo when i saw people post their stories and stuff in previous years it's a relatively new convention and um it just looked really great off the right off the bat so something that i've been wanting to attend for a while and i was so so excited when i got in because it is juried um so i was not sure if i would make it but i did which was pretty great but anyways um so I'll tell you guys a little bit about why I wasn't sure what to expect and kind of went in with very, uh, I don't know, like a very neutral type of no expectations attitude. So I've had a complicated relationship with conventions and that's a topic for another video entirely. But the gist of it is that they haven't been particularly fun or great for me for a long time, actually. Um, even pre-COVID, I kind of got back into conventions a little bit, but I didn't think it was worth my time in terms of the stress that it caused me to like prepare for conventions and such. As some of you may know, I'm from Canada, so I it's, it's a little bit of a challenge to logistically get things together in order to sell um, merchandise or like my artwork and stuff in other countries. Uh, US can be kind of tricky like i've had issues with that in the past anyways so it was a little bit of a logistical nightmare for me because uh lightbox expo is in california pasadena it's pretty far and so i had to plan a lot of things in advance and because i haven't done anything like that in a while um by anything like that i mean trying to go to a convention in a different country um, it was just, honestly, it like really stressed me out. <laughs> I was having a rough time. Every time I get stressed out about stuff like that, or actually anything for that, um, matter, I get a lot of like digestive issues and I just feel like really physically unwell. And for that reason, um, I dread anything and try to avoid anything that causes me too much stress, but... In this particular case, I'm very, very glad that I just, you know, decided to do it and kind of 
took up the mindset of regardless of how it goes and whether I have a hard time getting everything together like I decided that I'm just gonna treat it as more of like a vacation situation where for the most part I was excited about just meeting people in person and meeting a bunch of artists that I follow and admire from afar it was really really cool in that sense that honestly it kind of felt like instagram in real life because so many of the artists that i follow on instagram were there in person and it was really cool to see their art um just you know uh like nicely presented on a table and with them standing right there in front of it or behind it Anyways, uh, yeah, I, I really, really loved that aspect of it. I feel like it's been a long time since I felt like that at a convention. I kind of felt like that maybe a really long time ago when I used to go to anime conventions and they weren't as saturated and popular as they are now. But yeah, I'm, I'm happy to say that it was just an incredible time to meet everyone <laughs> and it was so cool to meet a lot of you guys in person as well. I was like really... I don't know, just so... It was so nice to have people come up to the table and tell me that they watch my videos and that they like to have them in the background while they draw. It was so, so heartwarming to hear because I've honestly never really had that before because I kind of started this channel like more or less during the pandemic and I guess I haven't really had a chance to meet anybody in person because of that and yeah it was fantastic and thank you so much to everyone who um did stop on my table and said some kind words and it was very encouraging and super i don't know it was just all like overall a very kind of um i don't know inspiring experience that made me really excited to go back home make new videos and finally get to work on my personal projects which my one personal project <laughs> yeah um so i just wanted to mention that and of course like shout out to anybody who will watch this video who i actually talked to in person especially um anybody who already follows this channel and uh you know decided to stop by and say hello which was super nice like i said moving on yeah um just to cap that off i definitely want to try to attend again next year uh, i had a total blast meeting people and i will um totally recommend that convention to anybody who loves art and loves meeting artists and it was a very like artist convention i don't know how else to describe it i mean that is what it is it's an industry kind of event and um yeah it was quite quite different from any other con i've been to before which were obviously mostly just comic cons or anime cons so yeah it was a great time and on that note, uh, I'm just going to take a quick second to tell you guys about this video sponsor, which is Squarespace, the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence for your business. One of my favorite things about Squarespace to build my website is how straightforward and simple the editing engine is. I was recently taking a look at it and I actually noticed that the little icon that you can see on top of the browser, this one right here, called favicon I believe, is just a dark box, which is default from what I've noticed when looking around the internet. This is definitely not something I like, especially for an art portfolio site. So I went to edit the site and found the solution instantly by just going to the design tab. Replacing it with my own logo took seconds and that is actually typically how the process goes with the upkeeping of my website. I also love that you can even edit the images directly in Squarespace if necessary, which saves a ton of time. And so I would highly recommend using Squarespace if you're looking for a platform to build your own website or a portfolio site. You can head over to squarespace.com if you want to get started for free. And once you put the website together and are ready to launch, you can go to squarespace.com slash cosmic spectrum art and get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. And now back to the video. So I wanted to talk to you guys about what I've been up to other than the traveling stuff recently. And it's mostly been just like slow, the slow wrapping up of all my external work, like my external commitments 
and i'm super happy to say that i actually did wrap all of that up like i don't have any more not a single task left to complete which is incredible because honestly like god every time i feel like like i'm almost done just like so close but then there's always the one more thing to do and as much as i do like a lot of obviously like you know i sign up for all my external projects um client work uh voluntarily and a lot of the time it is awesome to work with um all these different projects uh yeah i do i have been kind of like slowly trying to my way uh, make my way towards a kind of mm, separate or like self-sustaining existence where i can actually afford to work on my projects and now i am thankfully in that position at long last so that is where i am and so speaking of just getting back to you know trying to figure out what i want to do on my own which is my comic Gloomingville, as some of you guys might know so i have started to you know slowly inch my way towards working on it it is difficult it's it's very difficult to just jump into something i have had that situation happen a couple of times before where you know i seemingly wrapped up all my projects and then i just made the mistake of letting my mind preemptively worry about concerns that were not present at the time usually monetary concerns so like usually when i found myself in a position where i could technically just jump straight into working on my comic i would get sidetracked by the idea of like where is my next paycheck gonna come from and i was like well you know i can work on some side projects of my like i love making stationery i love making merchandise and so I just like totally got swept away by doing those side projects which ended up taking most of my time because like it's simple in my head but in reality it does require a lot of planning, a lot of work, you have to like figure out manufacturing, timelines, shop updates, photo shoots, etc. It really kind of multiplies. Anyways, my point is that I am very vigilant this time around and I will not allow myself <laughs> to make the same mistake again because being at Lightbox Expo, seeing people's awesome prints and amazing, like, cool merchandise, I got, like, massive FOMO, and I got all these ideas. I'm like, oh, I want to make this, and I want to make that, and so, yes, I am definitely keeping a lid on it, at least for now. Like, I'm not going to indefinitely just bar myself from doing all those other things, but I do think that um, my experience thus far tells me pre pretty clearly that I have to be very careful with stuff like that because it's so easy to get derailed so yeah um the only thing that i want to keep doing uh is like you know diligently is the youtube channel because i get so much personal satisfaction out of making videos and communicating with you guys and just honestly there's some accountability that i have not had before that comes with this as well i feel way less um inclined to do a you know endless hiatus like sometimes i do with instagram on youtube so that's good and so i will um definitely take advantage of the accountability that i tend to feel towards my youtube channel and so i decided to just kind of slowly roll back into doing my personal art through getting back to my favorite medium which is inks um, I don't know how big the gap is between me using inks now and between the last time I used them. I, I think from general memory, like, I kind of was on a digital streak for a little while there in the past couple of months. Because I um, just really wanted to make some fashion-oriented stuff, uh, artwork for the postcards for my art book Kickstarter. Which, by the way, my new art book prism is now available for pre-orders and i will include the link to that in my description but yeah i you know kind of like missed digital art and i wanted to do some of that stuff but now i am fully ready to get back to my traditional stuff and my inks and my sketchbook speaking of getting back to traditional there has been a lot of talk in the art community lately about ai art and i have seen a little bit of that and that's something i have a lot of thoughts on so i am working on organizing those thoughts and putting them together into a video i think it's actually really important for this discussion to take place and coming from a person who 
loves to keep my hand head under the sand when it comes to stuff like this and you know i typically stay away from anything that can be considered like an issue because i just you know like to keep it within my small circle and don't like to uh, project my opinions on the internet but i do think ai art is something that really needs to be spoken about in the art community and so i will definitely weigh on that weigh in on that soon but for the time being um yeah that's actually one of another reason why i was like you know what i kind of missed like drawing on paper it kind of soured my um digital streak a little bit <laughs> but anywho i'll definitely expand on that later so getting back into drawing on paper in my sketchbook was a little rough at first not gonna lie i kind of just jumped straight into it without doing any warm-ups which is a mistake i am prone to make all the time but it wasn't so bad because you know after some frustration um and a bunch of erasing of the sketch eventually i think my hand just warmed up enough that it got a little bit easier and by the time i got to inking it was not bad i did not make any um terrible mistakes and so i did not have to use a whiteout uh thankfully and i am pretty happy with how this image turned out i didn't really go in with any preconceived notions of what was it was gonna be the first thing i thought was that i must do some art in spirit of october and fall because i love fall so much it's my favorite season for sure and i don't know i just feel like i don't make enough fall themed art even though my pref my my uh, color scheme preference tends to lean towards fall colors that's definitely a thing that i've noticed but anyways um yeah and because i am kind of honestly sad about not having partaken in october sorry inktober at all this year i figured i'd just catch the last week and you know do a bunch of inked art and you know i don't even have to stop at the end of october either which is something that i can't seem to understand properly in my head it's like i don't have to just do inktober during october just draw inked art all year long if i want to but anyways yeah i wanted to use um just orange and one of the things that was a decision that i made was just using black ink which is you know it might seem really straightforward but honestly i haven't done that in a while like usually i will use brown ink and i have been doing that for years from what i can tell and this time around i was just so so inspired by my friend nina sir pangor on instagram um she is so incredible with ink and i love her line work so much and you know i was think i was looking at it and i'm like that's just black ink i want to kind of go back to the roots and just use black ink and see what i can do with that um that being said i did end up pulling out my brush and diluting some of it so that i could do the gray tones uh, speaking of tones screen tones is something that i've been obsessing about in my mind because i see some artists i really like use them a lot lately and i really want to give it a go myself but um they're kind of expensive and while i was in la i went to kinokuniya which i thought sold screen tones because it did last time i was in la or like every time i've been um in the kinokuniya there but i did not find any so i don't think they carry them anymore but anyways so because of that disappointment i finally pulled the trigger went on the official deleter website and ordered a bunch of screen tones so hopefully those come in soon and i can share some of the results with you guys but yeah um it feels super super uh it is like a big relief to finally be able to record videos again it is so much fun i i missed talking to you guys and yeah it's that that is essentially what i've been up to and if you stuck around till the end i thank you for listening to and watching my videos and i'm super excited to make more and give you guys some updates on the progress of my project i'll see you in the next one bye <laughs>